Hi everyone, this is Anil Bhatia again from PAT Fun Begins Practical Architectural Training, a unit of ADS Architects Design Studio. In the last two videos, we tried to understand how reinforcement is tied for a raft with the help of three drawings, only three drawings, and how a column reinforcement is tied. And we also discussed the column stirrups in detail. I had also commented that these two videos were slightly difficult topics, but we had tried to make them simple by making such models. And we explained these models in a step by step method. The next thing remaining in the raft reinforcement was the beams and the RCC walls. Both these drawings are very easy to understand. Let's start with the raft beams first. We had made a model of the RB3 beam which is this one, RB3 beam. This was a continuous beam and connecting three columns. Now if you see this other beam on the left, which we are zooming on to, you shall see the beam marked RB1. This is a simply supported beam linked to two columns in the foundation. So the first thing to understand is that generally in case of the basement's raft, there are two types of raft beams. One is the simply supported and the second is the continuous one. Now let's look at the simply supported beam first. Remember one important thing here, the forces here are reactional forces from below. Hence this raft beam is behaving exactly the reverse of a roof beam. In the normal roof beam shown on the left, have a closer look, the live load and the dead load are forces from the top downwards. Hence the largest bending is at the bottom center of the beam or we can say most tension is at the bottom center of the beam. Hence more reinforcement in the bottom center and at the ends the beam at the top are also in tension and hence the top end reinforcement on both ends is more. So you can see this in the diagram on the left where the main continuous bottom reinforcement is much more than the continuous top reinforcement. And the top end reinforcement has extra reinforcement to take care of the end tension. The top central area is basically in compression. Now let's look at the raft beam again and learn how to read the reinforcement in this beam which is exactly the opposite of the roof beam. At the base, there is a title and there are two informations in this title. The name RB1, have a closer look, and the size 700 mm into 1000 mm, where 700 is the width and 1000 is the height of the beam. The second information is the top reinforcement. It clearly shows that the through reinforcement, that means continuous reinforcement at the top, is 420 tor plus 216 tor. So this is continuous, which means that this reinforcement at the top is going from end to end and also bending at the end downwards. Then there is a second layer of reinforcement which is marked with a separate arrow showing additional reinforcement of 416 at the top, 416 dial bias at the top and that finishes our understanding of the top reinforcement. Now let's look at the bottom reinforcement. The main bars are again marked as 220 torque plus 416 torque which are again going through and through and there is extra reinforcement at the ends at the bottom reinforcement 
This is shown as 416 tor, which is the second layer. The top extra reinforcement was 950 away from the ends, both ends. And the bottom extra is extending 1900 into the beam from the inner end of the column. Now let's look at the stirrups. The information written at the lower end shows that 10 tall stirrups are required and these are 4 leg stirrups and these are 150 center to center throughout the beam. So they are not changing like it happens in the normal roof beam. Now this is shown in this model here. This is the 700 width of the beam and this is the 1000 height of the beam. And these are the top 6 main bars, 6 main reinforcement. And the extra reinforcement here is from here till here at the top. That means the extra required is in the central zone. And this is the bottom reinforcement here. And the extra at the bottom is from here up till here. And on this side, extra is from here till here. So we can see these three extra bars at the sides on both the face of the beam. These are called the face bars shown in yellow and are required when the height of the beam increases. Now look at these stirrups. These are a set of two stirrups. One is the outer stirrup here and one is the inner stirrup. Hence it is called four legged. One, two, three, four legs. Notice that this beam when inverted like this will act like a normal roof beam where bottom center tension has a higher reinforcement here and top end has higher reinforcement here because there is tension at top end too. But the stirrups in the raft beams are at the same center to center distance as in this case. And that's it. Nothing else to read in this drawing. So reading beam drawings are pretty simple. Let's read the next raft beam, which is a continuous one. This is shown here, RB3. Note that the top reinforcement again, the continuous top bars are 420 plus 216 tor again. And there are extra bars in the central portion shown as 416 tor, which is the central layer extra layer. Now notice the bottom bars. The through bars are 420 plus 416, 216 again and the extra bars at the two ends are 416 and these are 1750 from both ends and in the central area there are 620 extra reinforcement and these are again 1750 from the central column. The face bars are again the same, 3 on each side, 12 tor, 6 numbers, which means 3 bars on each face. But now let's look at a special beam in this raft. This is the RB8. And why is it special? Because it is in a curved form. And in a curved form, the character of stresses changes. Now the through reinforcement at top increases, even the second layer increases a lot. Even end extra is required at the top, both ends, which was earlier not required for straight beams. I will not go into the details of how to read reinforcement in this beam as it is the same method. The stirrups did not change in all three cases. I just thought that it was important for me to show the difference when we have a curved beam. Now let's move on to the 
last topic left in understanding the raft foundation and that's the rcc retaining wall generally we encounter two types of rcc retaining walls one is a free standing rcc wall purely retaining earth from one side this is like a cantilever from the ground and the load is from one side which has the earth and the second type is an rcc wall which is shown here with a similar load from one side but is part of the basement structure so basically it is fixed at both ends at the top is the basement roof and at the bottom is the raft the action of forces in both the rcc walls is totally different let's study them individually look closely at the rcc wall on the left this is the free standing rcc wall and now let us turn this by 90 degree as is shown there now it is clear that the load is coming from top and the slab is acting like a cantilever from the left so in such a situation we know that this tends to bend in the manner shown in the diagram on the left that means that the top of this is in tension and the bottom is in compression now let's rotate it back to its normal position action is same load is from the left so tension is on the left side on the earth side and the inner face is under compression hence now look at the reinforcement detail the vertical reinforcement on the outside is more and on the inside is nominal and the concrete thickness at the base is more than the top let's look closely at the reinforcement the outer vertical bars are of two types 16 tor at 200 center center and 12 tor at 200 center center alternate so that means one bar is 16 tor at 200 center center and the next bar is 12 tor at 200 center center so actual spacing between them is 100 mm then at the height of 2300 which is marked there the 16 tor bar which was coming from below this stops and the 12 tor bar continues above this part because the tension <coughs> at the bottom 2300 height was more and for all freestanding rcc walls this shall be the case and on the inside there are two types of reinforcement starting from the base 10 tor at 250 center center plus 10 tor at 250 center center this means 10 tor at 125 center center actually but shown in this manner because at the 2300 height we shall discontinue one of these and that is shown above that point the distribution still in this direction is the same in both the cases outer face and the inner face 8 tor at 200 centimeter you can have a closer look at that now let's look at the model of this rcc wall here it is so clearly visible that half of the reinforcement of the outer face that is 16 tor at 200 center center is stopping at this 2300 level and the balance is continuing up till the end this is 12 tor at 200 center center because the tension here was more so we required more reinforcement and the distribution is 8 tor at 200 center center and on the inner face again you can see this is the inner face this is the outer face and on the inner face again you can see that half the reinforcement is dis discontinuing at 2300 height and again the distribution steel is the same 
the thickness at the lower end the thickness at the lower end of the rcc wall is 450 and at the upper end it is 230 so it is tapered in this manner and that's it it's so simple now let's look at the other type of the rcc wall which is kind of fixed at both ends here you will notice that the thickness of the rcc wall at the base reduces to 300 mm given the same height now let's study the action of forces here the tendency to bend is as shown on the left if the earth is on this side it is bending like this obviously the inner face area has more tension hence you can see that 10 torque 200 center to center is going from bottom to top but in the central zone you have extra 8 torque 200 center to center because the tension in the center is the most similarly on the outer face the ends are in tension because it is like this so the ends are in tension hence the 10 torque 200 center to center is throughout but at the ends we have 10 torque at 200 center center up till 1500 in length from both the ends have a closer look the distribution steel does not change here and that's it no other drawing is required to explain the rcc walls now let's look at the model of the rcc wall which is fixed at both ends with the raft here and the roof here have a closer look at the outer layer this is the outer layer of vertical bars you can see that the main reinforcement is continuous from bottom to top and extra reinforcement is at the ends here in case of inner reinforcement again main reinforcement is from bottom to top but the extra reinforcement is at the center because the bending is taking place like this in this manner so we require extra here in the center for the tension so we are now through with the study of the raft foundation details till now in the first video on structure we learned in detail about raft reinforcement main and extra in the second video we learnt in detail about the column reinforcement and in this video we learnt about the raft beams and the rcc walls too now again i must introduce my staff who helped me coordinate the presentation sagrika and shubham and the group of interns who made the model which is a tough job sanchi and manvi please feel free to ask questions on the email id given below we shall be happy to be of any help we shall move on to the next topic in the next week and that is electrical work in a small house till our next video bye take care